Thank you. The next item of business is consideration of business motion 5626 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out a revised business programme for today. I would ask any member who wishes to speak against the motion to press their request to speak button now. And I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion 5626. Formally moved. Thank you very much. And no member has asked to speak against the motion. Therefore, the question is that motion 5626 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick be agreed. Are we all agreed? We are agreed. The next item of business is a statement by Shona Robertson on the impact on and response by the NHS in Scotland to the global ransomware incident. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Shona Robertson. Thank you, President Officer, for the opportunity to make a, a statement on the impact and response of the NHS in Scotland to the recent global ransomware attack. Members will have seen news reports about the global impact of Friday's attack. In the UK, the main area affected has been the NHS. Across NHS England, 47 health organisations were infected with the malware, including 27 acute trusts. While in Scotland, 13 health boards have experienced some impact from this attack, although less severely than in England. I wanted to come to Parliament today to update members on the, the current situation. Members will be aware that a UK-wide criminal investigation is underway, led by the National Cyber Security Centre and supported by, by Police Scotland. Health boards will fully support these inquiries. My Cabinet colleague, Michael Matheson, uh, Cabinet Secretary for Justice, participated in a meeting of the COBRA Committee yesterday afternoon, which was chaired by the Home Secretary to consider the consequences of the cyber attack. Ensuring services recovery from the cyber attack as quickly as possible has been a priority for health boards. What is clear that since uh, Friday, health board staff, as well as staff within GP practices, have been working extremely hard to ensure that the impact of this attack does not affect the quality and the care provided by vital NHS services. I want to take the opportunity to thank them all for their efforts. Of the 13 boards affected, NHS Lanarkshire and NHS Borders have been, that had had the most significant impact. In response to this, as with other health boards, contingency arrangements were put in place, including manual standby systems to ensure that appropriate patient information was still being captured and that patient services were being delivered across the NHS. I'd like to take this opportunity today to reassure patients in Scotland there has not been any reported breaches of patient data or personal details as a result of the attacks. Good progress has been made by all boards over the weekend in terms of recovery and mitigation. Most services, computer devices and systems are back online and operational on Monday morning. Many boards IT staff are working on a 24-hour basis to ensure that appropriate fixes and the guidance issued by the National Cyber Security Centre are in place so that services are available to the public as quickly as possible. There will, however, still remain ongoing work by boards to ensure that staff report any issues so that these can be investigated. I've written to health boards to record my thanks to all staff involved in responding to these attacks and thanking them for the additional work that they've carried out since Friday to ensure that the impact has been managed appropriately. While investigations and reviews are underway, initial assessment highlighted that across health boards, less than 1% of devices have been affected. This is around 1,500 devices in total. NHS Lanarkshire and NHS Borders have now reported that they've made considerable progress in restoring systems and that patient services continue to be provided. NHS Lanarkshire have reported that less than 20 patients waiting for routine appointments have had to be rescheduled. While the response from health boards and their staff is to be commended, I'm sure, like me, many members will want to understand why the impact from the cyber attack has affected the NHS. My officials are working closely with health boards to gain an understanding of why this situation arose in the first place. Issues that will be considered through this work will be to understand whether health boards had appropriate patching regimes in place. This is the process of applying fixes from software and hardware suppliers onto IT systems to improve security. With less than 1% of devices infected, I think we can draw some comfort from that position. However, we must not be complacent. 
I should also make clear that the adoption of any patch from a supplier requires a technical assessment to ensure that there are no unintended consequences on NHS systems. My Cabinet colleagues are also seeking assurance across the wider public, private and voluntary sectors in relation to cyber preparedness. And the Scottish Government have contacted over 120 public bodies to seek assurance that they have appropriate resilience in place. The Cabinet Secretary for Justice will today chair a meeting of the National Cyber Resilience Leaders Board, which draws together a range of partners, including industry. The board will consider the circumstances that led to the attack, the multi-agency response, and the steps that can be taken to enhance the future resilience across sectors. This is not a threat that government can combat alone. This is about all of us across all sectors, working, sharing and learning together to reduce the impacts that these criminal attacks have on our organisations and the public. There continues to be substantial investment in IT across NHS Scotland. The Scottish Government provides funding of around £100 million per annum to health boards for IT investment and for maintaining cyber security resilience. Health boards spend at least the same amount per annum. However, we know that in 2016-17, the total spend was around £257 million. Although the attack was unprecedented in its scope, with hundreds of organisations affected across the globe, it was not an isolated incident. In fact, NHS Scotland, along with other organisations, face similar attacks every day, most of which are thwarted by the controls and protections that are in place. All health boards have IT security frameworks and policies in place. The IT environment across health boards is complex with a mixture of legacy and new systems and technology. There is a continuing work programme in place to ensure all systems are updated as soon as possible as developments in technology move on. I can assure Parliament that the NHS in Scotland remains at the forefront of using digital technology to support the quality of patient services that we provide. There will be a number of lessons arising from these ransomware attacks that we must learn from. Reviews are already underway to capture what can be improved to ensure that we reduce the chances of a similar attack happening in the future. The Scottish Government will also be arranging a lessons learned exercise to help health boards and other agencies to mitigate the risk from further ransomware and other cyber attacks. However, due to these criminal activities, the NHS and all other parts of the public sector need to be vigilant and keep their systems up to date and fully protected at all times. This is a lesson that all parts of society can learn from. In conclusion, I want to reiterate that while the impact of these attacks has affected NHS boards, there has been no reported breaches of patient data or loss of personal details or any reported impact on patient safety. In addition, I commend the response of, of health board staff who have worked tirelessly to ensure the impact has been kept to a minimum. However, we cannot be complacent and we must ensure that the lessons identified are adopted by all health boards going forward so that we can minimise as far as we can the impact such attacks have on systems we use to deliver not just health but our public services in Scotland. Thank you. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the contents of her statement. We'll have about 20 minutes. Uh, I would ask any member who wishes to ask a question to press their request to speak button now. And I call on Donald Cameron. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I refer to my register of interest and the fact that I'm on the board of two companies which invest in health technology? I'd like to thank the Cabinet Secretary for advanced view of her statement. Um, this incident is unjustifiable and indiscriminate. And I too would like to begin by thanking the IT staff across Scotland who have worked tirelessly to get the NHS back online and the medical staff who have continued to provide care in the face of adversity. And I would add my thanks to the words of the Cabinet section. I welcome too that there has been no breach of patient data reported. We must also bear in mind that this is not just about infrastructure, but patients in our hospitals and health centres have been affected. Operations were cancelled and people were not able to get to their scheduled appointments. It may be the case that across the NHS, one of the reasons IT systems have failed is because out-of-date software is still being used. Can I therefore ask the Cabinet Secretary how will the continuing work programme she refers to in her statement ensure that systems are not only upgraded now but will continue to be kept up to date in the future? Cabinet Secretary. Um, 
Well, can I, can I thank uh, Donald Cameron for his questions and certainly his comments about the, the efforts of staff. Um, the IT systems across the NHS are complex and of course some of them are, are different because they serve different purposes. So the NHS systems that will be used within an acute hospital will be different from those used by special boards, for example. So having the same system in all of our NHS uh, uh, boards is, is not the issue. They will be different because they serve different purposes. Uh, at the moment, we understand that mainly Windows 2007 and Windows 2003 devices were affected, and only a small number of Windows XP devices were affected. I know Windows XP has been uh, an issue that has been raised um, uh, within uh, the, the media. Um, what I can say uh, about that is that there are uh, approximately 6,500 XP devices out of around 150,000 total devices, which is less than 5%. So what I'm saying is it's not straightforward that it's about one piece of software compared to another. What we need to understand is that across these different softwares that were affected, why were some affected and not others? And that's the piece of work that will now be undertaken. Obviously, I'm sure Donald Cameron will appreciate all of the efforts have been about getting the systems back up and running and, and sorting the problem so that the patient uh, um, impact can be minimised. The next phase is now to understand more about the software, what, ha what went wrong in those areas that it went wrong, and more importantly, what can we do to make sure that we uh, improve the resilience of those systems. I would just end by reiterating, though, that this was less than 1% of devices that were affected, which meant that 99% of devices were not uh, affected by uh, this uh, malware. So, uh, although that, that provides some context, um, Donald Cameron can be assured that I am in no way, no way complacent about that. Anna Sawar to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Anna Sawar. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for prior sa the statement and also join the Cabinet Secretary in thanking all those IT and NHS staff who have worked round the clock to get the situation uh, under control. In December, following freedom of information requests that showed that almost every health board in Scotland had been targeted by a ransomware attack, eh, Scottish Labour called for a review into cyber security. Um, in February that just passed, we exposed a security breach that involved NHS staff whose details were leaked, and again we repeated that call for a review on cyber security. And it follows seven years of questions from my colleague Richard Simpson, who is no longer in this parliament. Can I then ask the Cabinet Secretary if we now will have a review into cyber security right across the NHS? And secondly, given that we've had a history of ransomware attacks, can she confirm if we have ever had to pay out any ransoms uh, to any ransomware attacks? Um, and thirdly, if she can give an indication on pressures that exist on NHS boards in terms of savings they have to make, that that won't be impacted on the budgets the NHS boards have for cyber security. I'm sure what all of us want right across this chamber is for our NHS staff to be focused on patient care rather than having to worry about uh, this hacking scandal, which I'm sure all of us find unjustifiable and abhorrent. Cabinet Secretary. Um, can I thank Anna Sawar for uh, his questions? Um, what I can say to him that the back in February of, of this year, the Chief Operating Officer of the NHS wrote to boards reminding them of the need to make sure that they had the best uh, um, resilience in place and were following the best advice uh, to uh, make sure that uh, their systems were as good as they could be. I would also reiterate what I said to, to Donald Cameron, and that is that they are, there are regular uh, attacks on our NHS systems and the fact that to date uh, those have been very limited in their impact up until the situation on Friday I think says something about the strength of that resilience and indeed even though there has been an impact from the attack on Friday it was on less than 1% of the devices. I mean, we have 100, over 150,000 uh, devices across the NHS, and this affected less than 1,500 of them. However, Anna Sauer is quite right to say uh, about lessons being learned, and of course, in terms of the, uh, the review uh, of what has happened and what needs to happen in the light of this attack, of course, any recommendations flowing out of that 
that will be taken forward. In terms of payouts, no, there have been no payouts. It's not the policy of the NHS uh, to pay out uh, against these attacks. I think that would send out completely uh, the wrong message. And finally, on uh, budgets, uh, as I said in my statement, uh, the NHS um, puts a lot of resources into IT, of which, of course, cyber security is a, a key element. The Scottish Government invests around £100 million pounds, uh, each year. That is matched by health board funding. As I said, in 16-17, that was over £250 million, and this year uh, is set to be at least £200 million. In fact, over the last two years, the investment in IT has actually uh, gone up. So hopefully that will provide uh, some reassurance to Anna Sarwar on the issues that he raised. <clears throat> Stuart Stevenson to be followed by Miles Briggs. Stuart Stevenson. Uh, given that the opportunity for the cyber attack lay in a vulnerability in obsolete software and critically uh, the publicising of that vulnerability, uh, can the Cabinet Secretary consider whether it might be appropriate to have a database uh, that gives us knowledge of the use of obsolete software in public services and therefore enables us to target news of potential vulnerabilities of which become aware to the appropriate people before attacks may happen in future. Cabinet Secretary. Oh, I think Stuart Stevenson makes uh, an important point, although um, in response to, to Donald Cameron, I did make the point that this wasn't about one software. This uh, appears to have uh, affected a number of, of different softwares uh, and uh, particularly has uh, impacted on uh, GP practices rather than on the acute hospital with uh, NHS Lanarkshire being the uh, exception to that. So we need to understand I think, a bit more uh, around what lies underneath those areas that were, were more vulnerable because there uh, appears to be a, a different pattern in different places. So we need to understand all of that uh, more readily before we then decide what action we are taking. But what I can assure Stuart Stevenson is that the experts that are meeting today and the, the Leaders Board, which has been uh, chaired by my colleague Michael Matheson, uh, has the expertise there along with the other expertise that we will uh, draw from to make sure that the recommendations that we take forward into how we can make our systems more resilient will be based on the best available uh, advice that we can find. Miles Briggs to be followed by Jenny Gilruth. Miles Thank Briggs. you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to echo my colleagues' thanks to all IT and NHS staff who've worked so hard over the weekend to restore key IT systems and deliver care to patients. Is the Cabinet Secretary confident that sufficient resilience planning is actually in place to cope with larger scale incidents should they ever occur? And when did the Scottish Government last undertake an audit of these IT systems? Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, can I say to Miles Briggs that um, we are confident around the systems that we have in place, given that, as I've said uh, already, that less than 1% of devices were affected, but in no way complacent. This, I think, is a wake-up call, not just to the NHS, but the whole of the, not just the public sector, but industry as well. If you look globally at the type of organisations that have been impacted here, it is a wide, wide range of organisations. But, so we need, we need to look at what more we can do around resilience planning. As I said, we did write to all boards back in February, reminding them of the need to implement best practice and to get assurance uh, from boards that they were doing so. Uh, we are looking uh, obviously at, at today with the establishment um, of uh, an extraordinary meeting of the, uh, the, the leaders um, board, the IT leaders board. This is expertise across not just the public sector but industry as well to bring that together to look at whether there is more that we can do uh, in response to this attack but also on an ongoing basis to build that resilience and I'm very happy uh, to keep Parliament updated about that as that work's taken forward. Jenny Gilruth to be followed by Monica Lennon. Jenny Gilruth. Thank you, Presiding Officer. In light of the continuing threat, can the Cabinet Secretary provide detail on what measures are in place to monitor the safety of patient data? Cabinet Secretary. So, um, in response to Jenny Gilruth, just let me reiterate the important point here that uh, no patient data has been compromised. And 
Uh, I know this is very, very important uh, for patients because I know on Friday, as this information was breaking, this news was breaking, uh, that patients were concerned that their personal data may have been compromised. And it was very, very important that we uh, checked out uh, as quickly as we could to give that public reassurance, and we were able uh, to do so. Uh, and I would want to reiterate that uh, today. And of course, going forward, uh, what will be very important is um, in terms of the resilience of our systems, that we do have that security around uh, patient data. I understand very much the sensitivity and the personal nature of patient data that is held within NHS systems. So it's very, very important that we can give that security uh, to uh, <coughs> patients and that reassurance to patients. And that will be an absolute key priority going forward. Monica Lennon to be followed by Ivan McKee. Monica Lennon. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd also like to put on the record my thanks to the NHS staff who have worked extremely hard and around the clock in response to the cyber attack. As has been mentioned, NHS Lanarkshire in the central Scotland region I represent was one of the most significantly impacted health boards in Scotland. But the e-health department worked tirelessly throughout the weekend to restore critical systems and NHS Lanarkshire staff have continued to provide care of the highest quality. However, concerns have been raised with me about the impact of cancelled operations and appointments at Hare Myers Hospital in East Kilbride. What assurances can the Cabinet Secretary give to my constituents about the timescale for when they can expect performance in Lanarkshire to fully recover? And can she provide further details on what action is being taken in partnership with NHS Lanarkshire to upgrade and develop their IT system so that patients can have confidence that all possible actions are being taken to prevent similar attacks happening again in the future? Cabinet Secretary. Um, can I thank uh, Monica Lennon for the, the comments and I absolutely agree. I think that, that uh, staff within Lanarkshire, obviously one of the most affected boards, uh, really pulled out all the stops to avoid that impacting on patients as much as they possibly could. And I think their communication was very, very good as well in trying to uh, get the message across to patients to perhaps avoid coming to A&E unless absolutely necessary and indeed to perhaps bring uh, medication information with them because they were using manual systems. I should say that the manual systems that kicked in uh, were manual systems that are there ready to use should uh, an IT system fail and, uh, and they were put in place very, very quickly indeed and were very successful in ensuring a continuity of care over the Friday night and into the weekend, so I should put that on record. NHS Lanarkshire did experience uh, what was a widespread attack on their PC environment with around 1,100 devices uh, affected. Um, and this happened during a programme of PC replacement and we need to understand whether that was part of the issue and we're still uh, working on, on information around that. Um, over 200 infected devices have now been replaced through a targeted prioritisation uh, which focuses on keeping key clinical services running. So it was really important to make sure that we could get those key clinical services back up and running uh, as quickly as possible. As I said in my statement, uh, they've reported that less and 20 patients waiting for routine appointments have had to be rescheduled. As I understand it, they are being rescheduled as quickly as possible. And I will certainly make sure in terms of communication with those patients that that is happening. That is my understanding uh, of uh, the situation. Uh, so, you know, certainly in terms of what's happened in NHS Lanarkshire, that will be a key part of our learning. I think we were very fortunate that those were the only acute hospitals that were impacted on, because I know that the impact on acute hospitals in England was very, very challenging indeed uh, most of the impact in Scotland was around GP surgeries apart from NHS Lanarkshire but again Monica Lennon is quite right to pay tribute to the hard efforts of staff to minimise the impact on patients. Ivan McKee to be followed by Alison Johnson. Ivan McKee. Uh, thank you and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for the statement and can I ask what steps NHS Scotland is taking to learn lessons from this attack and to minimise the impact of any disruption due to any future potential attacks? Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, as I have um, said uh, so far in my statement, I can say to Ivan McKee that um, health boards have obviously been focused, as he would appreciate, on recovering their systems and their computers. But the next phase is now about the reviews that are underway uh, to make sure that we learn all the lessons from this attack and make the necessary improvements where uh, they have been identified that they need to be uh, made. Health boards are working to implement patches and ensure system security arrangements are up 
updated. Um, the Lessons Learned Review with health boards uh, will be getting uh, underway. Um, we've already got a lot of information. Uh, we need to make sure that we uh, have a, a, a full investigation of all of the detail of this. And as I said um, in my opening remarks, the, the work with the National Cyber Security Centre is going to be very, very important because they have a lot of the expertise that's going to be uh, important uh, here. And we will certainly be working with that national centre in taking these matters forward. And then finally, the uh, National uh, Cyber Resilience Leaders Board, which uh, I mentioned earlier, the Cabinet Secretary for Justice is chairing, is drawing together a range of partners uh, across the public and private sectors. And that will look at how we enhance the future resilience across all sectors, not just the NHS. And again, happy to keep Parliament informed of that work. Alison Johnson to be followed by Alex Cole-Hamilton. Alison Johnson. Thank you. Um, clinicians and healthcare providers often have limited time to work with patients and any protocols which make patient data more secure shouldn't impact frontline staff who need to be able to do their job without recalling and updating strings of long passwords, for example. So can the Cabinet Secretary give us assurances that any improvements made to the security of NHS IT systems won't have a negative impact on the, work for, the workload of healthcare professionals and what further engagement will be laid with patient groups and organisations who have concerns about the safety and privacy of that patient data. Thank you. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, just to reiterate uh, again um, to Alison Johnson that uh, there, has, there has been no breach of any patient uh, data uh, in, in this attack and it's really important that, that patients are reassured and the public is reassured uh, on that matter. I think there should be engagement with patients groups and the public around uh, their uh, involvement and everybody's involvement in making sure we can uh, have um, IT security maintained at the, the highest level and what improvements we need uh, to see. I take Alison Johnson's point about not adding to the workload of staff, but IT security is all of our responsibility. Obviously, we don't want that to be onerous, uh, but it, there is good practice, whether that's on an individual basis uh, in terms of backup and passwords, through to a collective responsibility in terms of the IT security systems and the, the patching and uh, that uh, the organisations would expect to have in place. So it is everybody's responsibility, but I do take Alison Johnson's point that we should not make that an onerous responsibility, but it should be everybody's responsibility. Alex Cole Hamilton to be followed by Claire Hockey. Alex Cole Hamilton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of her statement. I too would like to echo the praise of uh, fellow members in uh, praising the staff, many of you have come in on their days off to make good on this audacious and cowardly attack. Cabinet Secretary noted that NHS Scotland faces similar attacks to this on an almost daily basis and explored some of this in her response to Anas Sarwar. Can she give uh, Parliament details as to how many such attacks have taken place and whether each or any of these are subject to criminal investigation and how successful these criminal investigations have proven in bringing perpetrators to justice? Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, I can tell Alex Cole Hamilton that um, yes, the, there are um, regular attacks, not just on the NHS, but public services and other organisations. Um, uh, some of those are of a more serious nature than others, and obviously what we saw on Friday was a, the, a very, very serious nature, a global um, a, uh, attack across uh, so many different countries and so many different uh, organisations. Um, there have been attacks which have led to um, the involvement of the um, criminal investigation agencies in terms of uh, the, the cyber um, experts within Police Scotland uh, have uh, um, have certainly been making sure and have bolstered their resources. And I think if you look at the changing nature of um, cyber uh, attacks, it's very important that Police Scotland uh, have the expertise in order to deal with that. And they have certainly uh, got a number of uh, cyber security security uh, expertise within Police Scotland in terms of it investigating crimes of this nature. In terms of whether there are current uh, criminal investigations, that's something I will uh, write to Alex Cole Hamilton about um, uh, as a follow-up to the statement. What I can assure him of, though, is that uh, the 
Police Scotland in this instance, uh, Police Scotland working with the National Crime Agency uh, are ready, treating this as a very, very serious attack and will be um, giving it their full attention in trying to bring the, the perpetrators to justice. Clear Hockey to be followed by Brian Whittle. Clear Hockey. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that given the international scale of this attack, it is vital now more than ever that Scotland is represented at international discussions regarding security and inter international threats? Cabinet Secretary. Um, Yes, these are global uh, attacks and we need to make sure that uh, any discussion about our international or national response to that, that Scotland uh, has uh, an involvement in that, which is why it was very important that uh, Michael Matheson was taking part in the COBRA um, meeting that was chaired by the Home Secretary. Uh, it's very important that we uh, understand collectively what the, the threat uh, was here and importantly uh, whether it's a criminal investigation or indeed the lessons learned and the resilience of our systems that we draw on uh, that expertise. Um, so Michael Matheson has taken uh, part in those COBRA discussions. In terms of international uh, work that is uh, ongoing around this, yes, we would want to make sure that uh, the information and the, uh, the impact uh, from Scotland is recognised uh, on that global stage and indeed that any lessons learned that we can learn from elsewhere in terms of how it's been addressed uh, by uh, other countries and other organisations that might have relevance here, that we uh, take those lessons learned and can apply them here in Scotland. And Brian Whittle. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Just to ask the, the Minister um, how they will manage the backlog uh, after the, the, the cyber attack. Cameron Secretary. Uh, well, clearly, what was important. First of all, was to get uh, organisations up, back up and running as much as we could uh, yesterday morning. And I'm pleased to say that, particularly in the um, in the case of GP practices, uh, none were closed. They were all open, but obviously there was some work needing to be done in terms of retrieval of data um, from, from backup systems, and that is uh, well underway. Uh, in terms of Lanarkshire, um, again, it was a more complex situation. It's taken a little bit longer uh, to get those uh, systems back up and running because they have to be done, that has to be done in a safe way. They have to be tested, and it had to be done in a safe way. Uh, but we are very much... Uh, through um, the recovery stage and that's why we're now able to really uh, have got systems back working normally by and large uh, and we can now turn our attention to the lessons learned phase and what more we need to do in terms of building that resilience and learning lessons from the future. So uh, there we're making sure that impact, the impact on patients is kept to a minimum. Any patients, the less the 20 that, that were in NHS Lanarkshire have had to have their, uh, uh, their appointments rescheduled. We need to make sure that's done as quickly as possible. But the effort has been made to try and minimise the impact on patients. Thank you. Can thank members. We'll now move on to the next item of business, which is a statement by John Swinney on national bargaining in the further education sector. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I would ask any members who wish to uh, ask questions in this after the statement to press their request to speak, to speak buttons as soon as possible.